Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. Welcome to the crazy life, everybody. Uh, no Jen this week. I'm Brian. Joining me is, well, off and on lately, but <laughs> yeah, hopefully exactly. we'll, we'll see more of him. Hopefully a little more consistent. <laughs> yeah. We'll uh, is Heno. <laughs> Hello. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Jen, Jen was, you know, uh, had a big night of, uh, uh, playing kingpin in bowling. So, you know. You know, the best part is, like, whatever I say there, she she doesn't listen, so she won't notice. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You can just make up the silliest stuff, which, you know, really I should do. It'd be way more fun, you know. Just oh, like, yeah, like like she, you know, the she couldn't get her fingers out of the ball, went yeah. sliding down the middle of the lane, <laughs> took a nap. Yep, yep. That sounds about right. Right there. Mm-hmm. I you can know. see her doing that, actually. Not the nap part, but the going down the lane part, maybe. <laughs> she fell. She fell asleep. Uh, against the rack of uh, bowling balls and somebody actually tried to stick their fingers in her boob. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, she had a nickel for every time that, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't. I, I had can't. a nickel for every time at the bowling alley. So. <sighs> I'd have a lot of nickel. Oh. No. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, so how, how have you been, Heno? You were here last week, though, right? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, I was. Okay, I thought you were. Oh man. Yeah, we did. We did a Sunday. We did. Yeah, yeah, we did oh, a week yeah, ago. Right. Exactly. Yep, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Because you said you were done uh, campaigning, basically. Yes, so. I was. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I, I, I got my ass handed or my butt handed to me. So. <laughs> no, no. I think you were appropriate. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it was good. Uh, I had uh, the, like the next day. Mm-hmm. The writing was on the wall pretty you know i i saw it where it was heading when i'd run into people uh that that they were like wow i wish i could vote for both of you you know i've known Cass for a long time and you know like i wish i wish both of you were running because i'd put both of you in and it was just one of those you know i've known her for a long time I've known her for you know yeah blah, blah, yada yada i was like all right that you know that's just the way it is and yeah it's, it's um, exactly yeah. yeah and so uh but the next day i got you know i got a message from she was a former school board member and had sent me, sent me a really great message. And once again, I've known Cavs for a long time, blah, blah, blah. You know, and, <laughs> right. and just, you know, a lot of great compliments, <laughs> a lot of great compliments on the work that I did and, uh, you know, how, you know, how quickly I, I, I threw it together and learned everything. And yeah. Yeah. You was really able did. To pre- yeah. I was able to present myself in a concise fashion. And then I got a call from the city administrator who also, uh, said the same thing. And she said, you know, uh, in December is when we do 
uh, we start looking for new volunteers for the other committees and boards, uh, please put in a letter in, of intent with, you know, kind of what, which board you'd like to serve on and what, you know, what, you, what you think you could bring. And then later that night, I happened to get a text message from the, the chair of the PNZ committee, who's a friend of mine. And Janet said, um, the planet parks and lands would like to, you know, had mentioned wanting to have you on their board. And, uh, cause the chair of that had walked in and was talking to Janet and Janet was like, no, he's going to win. And they're like, well, you know, if he doesn't, <laughs> we'd love to have him, <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, and there was great, a lot of great optimism and stuff. And, um, so I did, uh, my letter of intent on Friday and I just targeted parks and lands. I'm like, you know, let's, if, if there's enough of that talk going around, I'll just target it. Cause that yeah. is really where my experience is, right. you know, I look at property management, you know, it's like. Parks and lands deal with landscaping, you know, some buildings, uh, you know, invasive species, yada, yada. I mean, it's just everything that I've done. Um, so, right. um, yeah, we'll find out what happens with that. But it was really, uh, in the end, it was a great experience. Like I went and hung out with my, um, I went, to, I hadn't been to my men's group in a while and afterwards went out to dinner with everybody. And, you know, one of the guys commented, you know, for, for losing, you seem like you've taken it really well. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, er everything worked out. Yeah. You know, I, I, I set a budget. I stayed within my budget. I, I made a decision early on what I was willing to do, mm -hmm. you know, time wise. And I did it all. Right. Um, I, I think part of it too was y you were pretty realistic about it from the start that oh, yeah. you knew she was a well known person that, you know, whether good or bad, that's some part of what you were going to have to go against was the fact that yeah. everyone knew her and sometimes people go with, you know, I don't, I don't mean to put her down, but it's like, you know, you go with the devil, you know, you know, kind well, of a situation. Is. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and it, and it, and it doesn't matter if, 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 you know, she's rubbed people the wrong way or whatever, you know, it's like, well, I've known her for a long time. So, exactly. You know, and, yeah. and I, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't agree with that, but you know, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to try to fight it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that was all really, you know, it, the whole thing was a great experience. You know, once again, that, this was her third election, my first. Yeah. So, and, but the real sad thing was, is, so we have 8,000 people in Haley. Mm -hmm. We have 4,000 registered voters. Okay. 1,200 people voted. Wow. It's so bad. And the, th and it again, is so bad. And again, it's like, I, these are the most important elections, the local ones because those yeah, they are the affect ones you directly those are the ones that you will always see you know uh, the fruits of yeah exactly yeah. so man yeah. that is a so, yeah 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 what are you gonna do right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so i i for you know like well, last last wednesday i came home and i was and i was a little i was a little fried just from responding to people yeah yeah i loved the you, you can only hear so many condolences. So to speak, you know? <laughs> well, you know what? I, I, I think almost every, well, a lot of us can identify with that. If nothing else, like, you know, like when my dad died, I got so many people coming up saying, I'm sorry that at some point you're just like enough. I don't want to hear this anymore. I'm yeah. And, I, and, I can't hear and, this anymore because you have to respond to it and you yeah. have to be nice. And after <laughs> yeah. a while you're like, I'm tired of it. You know, yeah. just go away. So, I, I, like, I sent you guys a picture. I was literally like, went, went to the grocery store, like, oh, guacamole. <laughs> just, guacamole and salsa and just eating chips for dinner. You know, <laughs> there's way worse things you could have eaten, though. I mean, yeah, it's you know, true. I, I know it may not have been, you know, the best thing, but it's like, you know, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are at least, you know, uh, good for you in those items, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and it, and it was, you know, Pure emotional eating, which yeah, is fine. Yeah. You know, I, I give myself these things because yeah. I knew that as, you know, and I had a, I did a nice little side job on, on, I had, I had somebody, I, I don't actively go out of my way to, to drum up business on the side, but I really should. It, it would, I, like what I did on Saturday took me, I mean, it was really four hours all told, you know, I, I'm going to make some extra money out. It go a long way to paying my debts and it feels really good. Yeah. But I had, I had, uh, somebody that works at the health club asked me about a fence that had blown down. And I'm just like, uh, there's a couple of things I try to avoid. And one of them is fences. <laughs> <laughs> the other one's tile. I don't do tile. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, and so I'm like, well, let me come over and take a look at it. And so I went over to take a look at it. It's like, okay, the poster's still good. It just literally the fence part blew off. And I'm like, well, all right, this isn't so bad. Let me throw some numbers together. And I throw some numbers. She's like, sounds great. You know, and I it literally took me an hour and a half, and I built a you know it was a twelve foot fence that goes between you know the fence and the house yeah and it, it had a nice feeling of accomplishment a little extra money and um you know so it's got me thinking because i when i moved up here i was like oh, i don't want to do two jobs anymore but i was willing to do a second job this last month <laughs> i mean that it's, was kind of the you're thing. right yeah ex- absolutely because even if you were like okay here's the hours i would have put into that i'm gonna allow myself those hours for a second you know side work even if you were like, I'm yeah. not going to do any more than that. That way it's still this, you know, I'm not like going crazy or whatever, you know, but whatever. Yeah, and yeah. I can, and we're, and we're at a place right now in our community where the, all the subcontractors are so freaking busy with all the construction that's going on right. that, that I can actually make some good money. I mean, you know, it's like people need somebody. So I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm considering that, but it was like, I already been to the gym twice, you know, it's like, okay, you know, back, back on track. You know, uh, just kind of get back to normal life stuff. Oh, that was the other thing. Finished my will. Yay. Oh, <laughs> Sweet. Three years later. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. Three, I looked at it. I'm like, it was 2014 that I signed up. That I did, uh, it's with, uh, uh, no, I did, uh, online with no low, no low press. Okay. And it's really great. They just guide you right through it. They've got all the questions and then, you know, you print it out at the end. And if you want to change anything, you have to, you you have to pay the subscription fee again. You know, you pay your one time fee, and then you have like a whatever it is a twenty five dollars subscription fee. Well, in in order to extend it every year, I had to pay another. So it was coming due on November fifteenth. I'm like, I I have got to get yeah, this done. Yeah. I've been there before, where you're doing something, you're like, I've paid for this for three years. I yes, need, exactly. I need to cut bait or or use this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's all printed today. I just got to find a couple of witnesses and I think I've found who I'm going to ask to do that. And then at least, Oops. at least it's something It goes in the safe deposit box and you know, it's just, I, I, I want to check off those little things off my list. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. So that's been, that that's, that's been my week pretty much. It's been, it's been good. Good. Glad to hear it. How about you? Um, <clears throat> so I went in on, uh, uh, Tuesday and it, to, uh, have a, a, a filling done, you know, and, and like I've said before, going in for fillings and stuff, not a big deal. I, I have a little anxiety beforehand, but it's no, you know, no big deal usually. Um, but I got in there and the dentist was like, why are, this is on a wisdom tooth? Why are we saving this? And I was like, Oh, I was like, you can pull it if you want to. I'm going to have the, you know, one on the upper part of that side of my mouth done. And she goes, you don't mind having it pulled? I was like, no, she walks away. And I was like, all right. Like, I had no idea what I'm just sitting there. Like, am I done? <laughs> you know? And uh, the hygienist is like, I think she's coming back. I was like, okay. Um, she comes back and she's putting gloves on and she goes, okay. She's like, we're going to go ahead and take that top one today. And she goes, when you, co- you know, are scheduled to have, when you were scheduled to have the, uh, the tooth removed, we'll just remove the other one. I was like, uh, what, huh? You know, cause, you know, this is just like, boom, let's do this. And I was like, all right. Huh. And, <clears throat> you know, and she, you know, numbed me up real quick. And, uh, it took like four minutes. I mean, literally she's like, open your mouth. I felt some pressure more from like her hands pushing down as she was yeah. pulling a little bit. And then, it, and then I hear clink and that was my tooth in the tray. And I was like, and next thing you know, tray, I'm, it, huh? I'm feeling gauze getting stuffed in my mouth. And I'm like, that's it. <laughs> wow. And, and she's like, yeah, you're done. I was like, okay. I was like, wow. I was like, do you want to do the other one? Cause I'm like, fuck it. If they're in there. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> you know, if they're in there, just well, why not do both? But, uh, she didn't, she said something about like, they, she doesn't like to pull on the same side if they can help it because of it, it helps the healing process. If you're not, if you don't have two at the I same see time. That. So yep. I was like, okay. But I, the best part about it was, I mean, first of all, it's gone. Um, but, um, I didn't have time to get anxious because it was literally so boom, boom and done. I mean, even like when I'm Mm. sitting there, the only time I had any time to get anxious was when I was waiting for the, um, the numbing agent to kick in, you know, um, because in the past, sometimes when they numb me up, it's not enough. 
And, <laughs> you know, like I've, I think I said yeah, it here yeah. before, I had a filling partially done with no, where I could feel everything. So, yeah. and not something I want to do again, especially when they're pulling a tooth, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. I figure that probably doesn't feel good. Um, but anyway, so I got a little anxiety there, but the worst pain I felt through the whole thing was when she, um, one of the the needles went into the roof of my mouth to numb that area, you know? Yeah. And that, yeah. that hurt, but not horrible. Yeah. It just, it hurt a little bit and then it was just uncomfortable because I could feel it in there, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And then that's it. You know, that was, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I, I now, you know, I have this other one coming up in a couple weeks and I'm just like, let's do it. You know, like I'm, yeah. you know, cause <laughs> that went, get into it. yeah, let's do it. Let's get her out of here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was wild. I went in expecting, you know, real quick, cause it, it, the, the cavity on the bottom tooth is really small. Like I chipped it a little bit and there's a little decay there. Yeah. Like it probably would be like a, you know, a two minute fix basically, but it's on a wisdom tooth, which, so it's, it's kind of pointless. Plus, like she said, since I'm having the top one pulled, um, there's no surface for the bottom one to hit. So there, oh, there's yeah. no point, like that tooth will do nothing. Because yeah, it's, yeah, you know, yeah. you can't chew with it because there's no upper to yeah, push down. Yeah, the top, yeah. Yeah, she's huh. like, so there's no point in keeping it. So I was like, yanker, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> also, my bottom ones kind of push through the gums and then get covered by them and push through. So this will alleviate that a little bit for me too. So I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, that was, that was wild though. Cause wow. I totally not what I expected. I come out, my, you know, my mom's sitting in the parking lot. Yeah. I come out and, She's like, uh, how did it go? she's like, wow, that was fast. And I'm like, bleh, 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 cause you know, <laughs> half my mouth was numb. Um, yeah, that was, you know, and I told her what happened. She's like, oh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> like t- not what I expected at all, but whatever. Um, yeah, cause it, for the first thought I had was when she said that, I was like, oh no, I left the, the pills that the doctor prescribed me for anxiety for this. Um, oh, I, le- I yeah. left them at home and I'm like, oh no, I can't even take one of these real quick, you know? Yeah. But I, like I said, I didn't really have time because no. from the point of numbing to me walking out of there, it was probably 10 to 15 minutes or, you know, something like <laughs> it great. was so fast. So I, you know, I'm, I'm very glad also that I have her scheduled for the next extraction because there's a couple dentists there and you kind of go with whoever's on that day. So, oh, gotcha. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so there was that, um, trying to think there was something else this week too. What was there? Oh, I've been, uh, I went through, um, my, my portfolio from like high school and college, like the first couple years I was in college Mm, and I dug some stuff out of it and took some pictures, not great pictures because they're, you know, with my phone and there's, you know, the lighting's not perfect, but whatever. Um, And I've been kind of, not every day, but almost every day, I've been putting one of them up on Instagram. Oh, cool. You know, and, you know, part of it's to put myself out there. Um, You know, um, also part of the reason I did it, well, part of the reason, the main reason I did was I had a few people that wanted to see stuff. So, you know, I was like, okay. Um, But I, you know, it's also nice to, like, I'm looking back at some of the stuff. And, you know, I, I've, the first thing I see is how I could have pushed this a little farther. This is a little too much, you know, like, you know, I'm seeing the mistakes. Um, but at the same time, I'm also going, you know what? I, I at least had a really good start on this. Like, you know, I need to practice more. I need to put some more work in. But, you know, it's like I, I wasn't bad at this, <laughs> you know, like, so it, it's kind of a, uh, you know, and I, and it's kind of cool too, because looking at the stuff, I can remember when I drew it, you know, and I can remember, mm-hmm. like, there's one that I, I posted the other day. It's of, um, we had to pick things that, um, we really liked. And then basically, um, we didn't, we didn't assemble it and then draw it. Like, a, you know, we didn't do a composition and then draw it, but you basically would, could do the composition on the paper however you wanted. So you could turn things however you wanted to and, lay them out and looking at it, I'm like, yeah, I should have used space differently. But, um, um, I, one was a Darth Vader Pez dispenser. Um, hmm. one was, um, uh, from the comic book, the max, 
Um, I had the action figure of the Max, which I used to, I had it in my desk in commercial art in high school. And, uh, I love that thing. I still have that figure. <laughs> um, huh. and, and then, um, also I put, uh, cheese from the comic book Milk and Cheese on there. And it's funny because the cheese drawing I did is like spot on. Like it's dead on for the character. Um, the max one I'm looking at going, Ooh, my proportion on the neck and head's a little off. Uh, you know, like I see a couple mm. things and I'm like, yeah, I really wish I would have, you know, worked a little lighter. Cause I got dark on that one really fast. And it's one of those things you learn really quick as an artist that you, you know, you layer because you can, you know, when you layer, you can kind of remove a layer, you know, but if you yeah. immediately are just like, ah, I'm just pushing really hard with your pencils. It's like, well, that's it. <laughs> You try to use an eraser, it's just not going to work well. And um, you're committed. <clears throat> but, you know, looking at that, um, I remember when I drew it, because it was at the time, those were three of my favorite things. I used to have a Pez dispenser um, at my desk in commercial art, and I had a Pez dispenser probably on me a lot of the time. I have a lot <laughs> of Pez dispensers. So, um, you know, and like I said, I love that Max toy, I used to sit and draw that thing from time to time. You know, which is a great use of action figures for anybody who is out there. If you want to draw, especially the ones that have all sorts of articulation, because you compose them kind of however. It won't be an anatomically perfect because, you know, the muscles won't turn with whatever, but you can at least get the form. Um, so, you know, I used to do that with my toys a lot of times for that reason, trying to, you know, work on some anatomy. You know, and then the, the cheese, like I said, looking back at that and I'm like, man, I did a good job on that. <laughs> you know, like I'm really happy with it. It's, it's not hard to draw. I mean, it, it's a pretty simple character, but, um, but still looking back on that, you know, brought back kind of positive memories and stuff. And I was like, you know, maybe this, this is kind of what I'm needing because it's giving me confidence a little bit in my skills because other people are seeing it also on Instagram and going, wow, this is cool or whatever, you know? And then I'm also seeing it going, okay, you know, this is, you know, what, what I did. And, and I remember doing that stuff. Um, so hopefully that, you know, that'll, uh, help me a little bit here. So, you know, we'll see, but it, it was, was cool. It was funny though. Cause seeing there was some of it that I saw that I, I'm not going to post because I'm, I was like, oh God, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like there was some graphic design stuff I did and I was like, oh, why did I choose that font? It's not right for the, you know, um, but there was, you know, it, it was, uh, it was really interesting to go back on that. Cause I mean, this stuff is from like 94 to 98. So this is going back a ways, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, Yeah. And there was another That's great, one though. I did of the Max where it's, um, um, he fought these characters called Iz. It's spelled I-S-Z. And, um, I drew him from the side, like holding up a Pez dispenser and it says Iz on the side and it's got an Iz as the top for it. And I submitted that back then to the comic book because, like, sometimes, like, it wasn't every month, but sometimes they would, you know, put a picture of someone's drawing in the back of the comic, but it didn't make it, but you know, that's all right. I still did it though. You know, the fact that I sent it in at the time was like, yeah, I clearly had confidence in my skills <laughs> and I thought it was funny. Like I thought the concept was really funny. I haven't found anyone who found it as good as funny as I did, <laughs> but you know, that's fine. Uh, I, I, I find it. I, I enjoy going back and listening to old stuff. I did. Mm. Because uh, it, it inspires me in a different way. Yeah. Like if, you know, and, and I'll like go and it's like, oh, wow, I forgot all about this or something. And it's like, the, it's like, oh, yeah. And there'll be a certain sound or a style or it's whatever I was into at that time. Yeah. And it goes, oh, I could do that today still. You know, it's it's good. Yeah, exactly. And that that's kind of what I was looking at with this stuff because, yeah. you know, I, I was looking at some of the – you know, just some of the pencil work and stuff that I did. And I was like, you know, I, I was, again, I was like, I could see things that I needed to work on, you know, cause like I said, or things that I've have worked on, you know, things I got better mm -hmm. about over time. Yeah. But I also saw, I have a, like a long running issue with, I don't do, um, like if something needs to be like 
completely like straight or perfect or whatever like that. I mean, obviously if it's gotta be straight, I'd use a ruler or something, but you know, some lines and stuff, I, they're not, I don't know how to word this. The best way I can put it is they're not confident strokes. Okay. Like it looks like I'm just kind of like eh, drawing instead of, mm-hmm. you know, just boom and putting it on the page. And yeah. that's something I've seen in a lot of the stuff I've done. And, you know, um, I see it more now than high school stuff, which tells me, you know, that's as my esteem eroded, you know, that I oh, think gotcha. it, it followed. So, <clears throat> which is so weird because in college and stuff, like I, I got great grades, you know, I, I got like A's and B's on everything, <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Anyway, I've rambled about that for long enough. Uh, if anybody wants to see the art, um, I have a Dropbox that I threw it in. I'll put the link in the show notes, or if you, um, you know, uh, message me, I'll send you the link for it. Um, I feel like there was something else, but I cannot remember it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing else, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, it, interesting week for me. You know? Yeah. Um, sounds like it. Yeah. And again, you know, putting that art on there, it's a, another way of like the other stuff that I've done where it's putting myself out there because somebody yep. could go, wow, you suck. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, uh, it's true. It's, it's true. Nobody has, I don't think anybody will. Cause first of all, I have a private Instagram account. So it's, you know, I, I vet mm. who's on there, but yeah, yeah. Still, I, most people are pretty cool about stuff. So. Yeah. But then I, when, right after that, I'm like perusing my timeline on Instagram and I see this guy that I follow that does these amazing, um, like sketches, like head sketches mm-hmm. and stuff. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> run and hide, run and hide, yeah. run and hide. I know. And it's like, you know, you shouldn't compare yourself to others, but it's still, I see that and I'm like, I have so far to go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's also his style. He's been working on that for a long time, you know, so, you know, he's put in work. I mean, the guy draws every yeah. day. He posts things from like Starbucks that he does every day. You wow. know, yeah, he puts the work in and it shows it's phenomenal. Yeah. So, you know, if I want that level of work or, you know, t- stuff, I have to put that work in, you know, so, so yeah. Yep, still don't remember what the other thing was. So, <laughs> so moving on. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Well, I guess um, it's funny we both talk about um, you know having fairly good weeks, but uh, our topic for today is you know <laughs> can bad emotions be good for you? So it's I was trying to think of a segue while I was talking something. I was like, I really don't have <laughs> I got one. Got nothing. You know, things have been all right, and yeah, so. <laughs> Oh man. <clears throat> so do you want to cover this? Cause I know you read it. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. You know, I think it, it's worth just jumping into their, their, uh, for, mm-hmm. all right. So for those of you, this is psychology today. Mm-hmm. Good point. By Marsha Reynolds, uh, and, uh, who calls herself the wander woman. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's called, can bad emotions be good for you? How to put your bad emotions a good use um and there's some yeah there's a personal anecdote here but i I figured we just jump right into the um uh the the bullet points (laughs) yeah works for me um so it says put your non-positive emotions to good use let's look at the light side of a few dark emotions keep (laughs) in mind that your reactions to these emotions could be destructive other times these emotions serve a higher purpose and uh, this is the, the part that I relate to in recovery is this idea that our character defects could, can be our, our greatest assets. Yeah. They all can be, they all have that dual purpose. I don't remember. Did, did we talk about that? I know that came up at least once where you, I remember us talking about it a little bit. About how easily, you know, how good things can become, you know, your best traits can become bad traits and vice versa. Yeah, that, that whole, you know, that, that, that thing that allows me to hyper focus on something Mm -hmm. can be good and very bad. Yep. You know, it also means I can't sometimes let something go. Right. (laughs) 
<laughs> and and then there's the, you know and, and they they work both ways and like this you know she, uh, she says you know non positive emotions can motivate productive behavior they might trigger a great change when channeled in positive directions and it is better to learn to recognize your emotions so you can use them to explain your behavior and express your needs and channel your energy in a positive direction and that's the thing that I I, I think is really important when. Uh, uh, one thing that I learned, and I've talked about this before, is where I had we were loading in for a gig, and a and a, a piece of equipment fell out of the truck and landed on the floor, and it cracked. Ooh. And I wasn't the one that opened the door; somebody else did. It, right? It yeah. wasn't their fault. And and you know, and I was upset. Mm-hmm. And I quickly reminded myself, "Oh yes, let him know that you're not upset at." him because it wasn't his fault i'm upset that something got damaged but nobody's fault yeah mm-hmm. right and that that whole thing about you know explain your behavior express your need you know those yeah, things right. you know mm-hmm. let people know what's going on so uh the first one on the list was guilt stanford university researchers rebecca schaumberg and francis flynn found leaders who showed a tendency to feel guilt were rated as the best leaders on 360 degree feed back assessments guilt may motivate desire desire to do well and make decisions beneficial for the group even if at a personal cost the light side of guilt is compassion care and generosity and i just happened to hear some uh because of our uh president of the united states (laughs) uh there was there was some talk there was some discussions about past presidents of the United States and one of them uh, so several books have been re- uh, written recently on Bobby Kennedy mm-hmm. and about what made him so he was very popular and one of the things that, that he did is after uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was shot he walked into that church to you know to tell those people that you know a guy Shot their, you, you know, yeah, their leader, their role model, everything, and and uh, he did it out of a desire for compassion, and and you could say that, yes, it ca- it, it comes from guilt, it's from that same thing, but it was just that that you know there were there were cops there that were like we're not going in there, and he's like I am, right, you know I need to I need I need to have this conversation, yeah, I need to talk to these people. And, uh, you know, there's been other, other, uh, uh, political leaders who have done the same thing, mm-hmm. that they have that level of compassion where they, you know, they get out of their car and they walk, they, they go talk to people and hug them. Yeah. Um, so it was really, it was really interesting. And, uh, the idea that it, it comes, I can relate to this because of just from recovery where, it's the idea of turning it, you can call it paying it forward, uh, giving back what was given to you. You know, not everybody, it's the only way that I can make positive of some of the bad things that I've done yeah. as an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I can have a lot of guilt. Yeah. A lot of guilt. <laughs> right, right. I can't change any of it. Mm-hmm. I can't get rid of it. I, all I can do is do what I can to, you know, take care of it, but then turn it to, you know, doing good mm-hmm. to, to take that same, you know, oh, that was the one thing our, 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 uh, when one of the articles we looked at today was talking about jealousy Yeah, and that, 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 and it mentioned about people who have never been jealous when they finally, finally have something happen in their life lives where they where they finally felt jealous when they were followed up later they suddenly have they had more compassion for people that that they had caused to feel jealous (laughs) yep you know what i mean like it was a little bit of a turnaround yep and and i actually had that happen early in recovery where where i had gone through some feelings and some emotions and i was talking to somebody on the phone about it and and they literally said so how does it feel (laughs) ouch (laughs) and and i laughed because it was the truth yeah you know and it was the truth, and that's what it reminded me. It's like, okay, you know, take the light side of guilt as compassion, care, and generosity. <laughs> yeah, and it makes sense. I mean, even if you boil it down to the idea of 
balancing um like you know a, like a karma kind of a thing like i need to balance yeah. the the bad i've put out there with some good basically so it's yeah you know i, I could it makes sense a lot of people and i'm not saying that people do it for that reason alone it's just you know i'm just kind of boiling it to its core um but but that is really it makes sense there's a lot of times people feel guilty and do something good because of that guilt you know um so and, yeah. and, and it usually makes for a good story yeah yeah you know when you find, hey why'd you do that well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how long you got so, no. <laughs> yeah exactly. so the next one on our list is anger mm-hmm. you might use your anger to launch a big change in your life many great things have happened based on the power of oh yeah i'll show you <laughs> <laughs> if the anger prompts you to speak up when uncomfortable Take a step into the unknown or prove you can accomplish something you weren't sure you could, then anger is a force for good. The light side of anger is passion, courage, and determination. I love the way that, you know, she ends with these three positive yeah. aspects of it. Mm-hmm. It's really great. This one yeah, I, that's, I definitely yeah. relate to because, you know, I've, I've had some real issues with my anger, more so in the past than anything. And, but a lot of the times when I would get mad, it was for, how can I word this? I felt righteous, you know, like in, mm, in, in yep, that yep, moment. Yep. And I think that's kind of what it's getting at is like, I felt that someone was, you know, um, attacking me personally or something more along. So I immediately would, you know, like, oh yeah, well, you know, <laughs> or I would just fire up because of it. And, you know, again, there's the passion and all that stuff. I mean, you know, courage because I'm really not like, I've always been someone who kind of just, I kind of just say what's on my mind, but I also have a filter. You know, there's some people that I I filter a little more than others. And, you know, I mean, even if this sounds terrible, a lot of times it's based on their sensitivity, you know, (laughs) Uh, you know, cause I know some people can take it and I know some people who can't. So you try to, you know, try to find what works best for them. No different than leading a team. You know, if you're a a manager or something, what works with one person won't work with somebody else. So you have to find what works for, you know, um, but yeah, there's, there's been plenty of times where I'm just like, no, that's not good enough. I'm not accepting that, you know, and I, I will stand firm and fight and fight and fight for myself or for somebody else or what. I mean, a great example. I think, I think I told the story on here about, remember when I was at that Walmart and there was a, a woman who told a little girl to, or a yep. girl to smile because yep. boys like girls who smile and I went off on the woman. It's like, I yeah. normally, that's not me. Normally I would not do that. I, if someone was just talking and said something a little, whatever, I'd just be like asshole and keep walking, you know, yeah. but that one, I was like, Oh no, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this has to be yeah, said. But- this has to be said right now. And this has to be said by me. <laughs> do you ever have the moment where you're, you've, you've chosen, you've chosen to put the foot down. You've drawn the line you've, you know, this is the Alamo, <laughs> you know, right. and, and, and the other people are, you're basically, you're going to win. Mm-hmm. And then, but you have all that, that built up energy inside of you because <laughs> yeah. there was probably a conflict to some degree. Yeah. And then, and then it's like, I'll get this overwhelming urge to turn it to something good. Like I want to take it and do something positive with it because I just won <laughs> and I feel a little guilty. <laughs> right. And I don't want to gloat. <laughs> and yeah, but, but I, mean, it's I, like, do, but I but... feel like I should put it into something positive. Yeah. It's like mixing anger and guilt together. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I, I thought you were going to say like when you, you, you're preparing for like a big kind of a confrontation or whatever and you start it basically like with, oh yeah, well this. And then the other person just is like, oh, you're right. And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's like you have all that built up and you're like, uh, I have that's to, another good one. I have to do something with it. All this, something with this yeah. anger that I have built up now, you know, and that's happened, Put your- you know, like, and I'm sure everybody's had something like, you know, you're at a store or whatever. Something gets, you know, something yeah. happens. You go up and I want to speak to the manager. Uh, yeah, I want to meet the manager. Man, man. No problem. We'll take care of that. Here's yeah, a refund. Like, oh, um, thank you. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> And then you're still like, meh, 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 out the door because you're, you still have it. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go help the old lady walking out with yeah. her groceries. Yeah, it's like because I'm Captain yeah. Passion now. Right. Like, do you need help? <laughs> you know, like, sorry, I have a bunch of anger built up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good. that's I. Th- I've ran into that quite a few times because you know some people will just like you. You know, like I said, customer service or something. They'll just be like, "Oh, okay, we'll do that." Blah blah. You know, yeah. and you're like, like, oh, huh? I was expecting a fight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's Can a good I be your friend now? Yeah, right? <laughs> well, since I have you on the phone. But, but there is nothing, there There really is nothing better than anger to motivate you to change. It, it's, yeah, it's very and, true. And, and it's better to do that. It's better to, you know, especially when it comes to something that, that well, you know, you feel you is is wrong in, in your local community. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, step up and volunteer. Yeah. Uh, there's something not, you know, there's like... You, 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 you kind of, you lost an opportunity at work that you should have, that you should have had and, and, and you just go, okay, I'll show you. And, and you go out of your way to just. Jen actually has, has, I don't remember if she's mentioned on here, but I know this is a way she, she's thought in the past. Um, like different times. I, yeah, she has mentioned on here when she's gotten passed over for like a promotion or she's going for another job or something within the company. Um, what she does is instead of getting mad or, or like dejected by it, she will look at like, she will go and be like, okay, what do I need to do to where next time I yeah, have a better chance? Happen. And then she immediately takes the, and it's not even a, you know, I'll show you, but it's a, okay, clearly I don't, you know, there's something yeah. I don't have. What is it? You know, and that's what she tries to find out. And if it's something she can work on, she'll work on it. That way she's more, uh, well-rounded, you know, and now she's, she's got experience and, you know, by doing that also, you know, the place you work for goes, Hey, you know, they're doing this on their own. They might notice that you're, you know, committed to growing as a, a worker. So, you know, it's, and I've always liked that attitude she has because most people, if they got passed over myself included, uh, they might, um, you know, call their district manager and say, this is my last day and just walk out. So, <laughs> <laughs> or light something on fire, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. But well, the the one thing that's great about that is it it puts the control back into your hands. Yes, because the other way is you are just drinking the poison and hoping the other person dies. Yeah, you're simmer you're you're simmering in your own bitter resentment rather than turning around to what I can control. Yep, that's absolutely true. That's a great point. Uh, I, and I'm actually surprised I didn't think of it too. <laughs> Cause I'm always telling people, you know, like take your control back. Don't let someone have that control <laughs> over you. Don't, you know, and it isn't about being righteous or, or fighting with people or anything like that. It's just that, you know, if someone just screams at you, it's like, look, I don't deserve to be treated. I don't care what I've done. I don't deserve that. You know, like let's yeah. have a conversation. We're adults. Let's, you know, let's talk this out. So yeah. And that's a great point with, with this, you can take that, uh, Take that control back because really a lot of times when we get angry, we concede control immediately and we don't even oh, yeah. realize that we've done it. You know, you know, if you let someone yeah. get under your skin a little bit or yep. make you mad and next thing you know, you're like, even with the I'll show you thing, if you kind of obsess on that, you're giving something power that the other person probably doesn't even care about. You know, exactly. Like you're like, here's all my power. And they're just like, yeah, set it over there. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> so true. Oh, that's good. So our third one is fear. When your brain senses a threat, your ability to focus is heightened. Many people say they work better under pressure. In truth, their creative capacity weakens, but they better block out distractions, hone in on the task at hand and work faster. You should work this way in spurts so you don't burn out. But the light side of fear is focus, intensity, and alertness. And it's that's it's very true. Yeah, uh, I I like that their creative capacity weakens, but they better block out distractions. And that that's true too because when when you're in a state of fear, you know, and I think the best way to 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 view this is uh, when you're about to when you're running out of time for the deadline. Yeah. And you cannot, and if you're, if you're freaking out about what the reaction is going to be, there's no way that you are working at your best capacity. Right. Probably also it's at the end of a long day, possibly at the end of a long week. However, you, uh, you, you do have that, that ability to just block out the distractions. Oh, I'm hungry. No, I'm not. Yeah. 
you know, uh, you know, you, you can just, you don't, you don't need to eat. You don't need to this. You just can really, you know, all those things that, you know, the reason that you're late to begin with is because of all those distractions that you were doing in the first two hours of your day. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, listen, that game, that game had to get played on my iPad. You know, I mean, yeah, I, I that was a, an important off. Facebook comment I had to respond to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For six hours. <laughs> For six hours. Yeah. You know, it's funny though, like when reading that about the whole, um, your, your ability or your creativity weakens, but you can block out distractions. In, in my head, I'm, I'm going back to when I was in college cause I was working full time also. So, you know, I'd get up, go to school or work and then go to the other one, then go home do homework until four or five in the morning, get up at eight or nine and do it again, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and there were other times where I'm like, I'm going to sleep. I'll get up way early and then I'll work to where I'm working until like the last second on something, mainly because Mm -hmm. I would put it off, you know, I just, you know, wait. And you know, it's funny because it's like, and then there's some of that stuff. Like now I look back at it and go, I really didn't put full effort into that. <laughs> and in, you know, it, there you go right there. <laughs> My creative yep. capacity was weakened. So it was probably more like, just get it done. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> uh, which I don't recommend, you know, especially when you're paying, no. <laughs> when you're paying for school, you're cheating yourself. <laughs> yourself is true. Plus by not putting that work in, you know, you're less prepared when you walk out of there at the end, uh, or yeah. at the end of it, whatever class or whatever, you know, you haven't done yourself a service by doing that. I, you yeah. know, that's what, you know, I wish I had cut back on my hours at work so I could focus on my schoolwork. That's cool. But eh, what are you going to do? What are you gonna do? <laughs> so our fourth one is disappointment. When you don't get what you expect from your work, people, and even yourself, you might feel angry and disappointed. What didn't you get that you really wanted or you thought was promised to you? What did you hope or dream for? What are you not getting from the situation that you need, such as respect, achievement, or autonomy? When you discover what you expected to get, you might ask for what you need. If you realize your dream won't come true as you had hoped, you might allow yourself a few days to grieve the loss so you can then move on. The light side of disappointment is the ability to accept what is, and then move through suffering to freedom or discern what you need and ask for what you need to ask for to move forward. I like that thing that, the uh, to free or discern what you need to ask for to move forward. And that's a big deal. Yeah. Cause sometimes when you're, when you're in disappointment, you don't necessarily know what you want. Yeah. You don't have that clarity. Uh, and I think like, so pretty much this one sums up my week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, the light side of disappointment is the ability to accept what is, which I did. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I had no, no doubts about it. It wasn't, you know, and then, uh, move, move through suffering, uh, to freedom. And, and that was, I mean, I didn't, it wasn't like, it, it wasn't that heavy, but I get that feeling mm-hmm. of that where you feel bur- burdened by the event or whatever happened. Yeah. And to let go of it. And usually, and, and what I, and I did discern what I needed to ask for to move forward, which is I found something else that, that, uh, something that good that could come of it. Yeah. And, and I instantly allowed me to, to let go of, and that was, I think I always started with that was, is, um, I want something good to come of, of this experience. And as long as I can find that, I won't be disappointed. Yeah. From the beginning, you really were kind of like, hey, I'm running for this, but I'd also be really happy if I got this. And in the yeah. end, you didn't get the the city council, but w- with this popping up and relatively quickly popping up, yeah. you're kind of like, you know what? I still won. You know, like, I, yeah, I did, you know, like this is, you know, it's like going in for a raise and you give a big yeah. number and they go, eh, how about, you know, this much less? And you're like, cool. And that's really the number you wanted anyway, you know? Yep. So, and some, some yeah. people, re- cause that got into the newspaper and some people reacted a little bit negatively up to it at first. They're like, well, that's not the right attitude to have. You should shoot for the moon. Yeah. You know, except no substitutes, yeah. you know, hit, go, go for, go for broke. And right. I'm like, I'm like, well, no, this is the truth. Yeah. And don't get me Either, wrong. In a lot of things, I, I think that is the right mentality, you know, to like really go after something. But with this, I think you were kind of like, look, I want to help. Here are the places where I can help. 
I just yeah. want to end up somewhere where I can, you know, do some good. Be useful. Yeah. yeah. And, and it wasn't, it's, it's not, it wasn't a consolation prize. Right. Exactly. Yeah. To me, it's still a win. It's like, mm-hmm. you're like, you're talking about the negotiation. It's like you, you said, you, you, you went in with this one thing, but you, you knew what you were good with. Mm-hmm. And if you got it, you're fine. Yeah. And there's, and there's nothing wrong with, and you know, I, I set my boundaries for what I was. And so that's why I think I wasn't disappointed. I, I think a lot of, um, I feel, I felt like I was grounded from the beginning. Yeah. I think you were too. You know, I, you know, I, cause I, the way you approached it really, like, I, I mean, I know somebody could look at, at what you said about it and probably be like, oh, you had a defeatist mentality from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. You didn't expect yeah, to totally, win. Yeah. But I don't think it was that. I really think it was one of those situations where you looked at it and you were told by people that you may not win. You know, that, yeah. that this woman's really well known. She's, you know, all this other stuff. So it's like, you know, going in, you were kind of like, we'll see, you know, like, it's just, you know, yeah. I'm doing this, we'll see what'll happen. And, you know, and you're, you're, you've gotten pretty good about just rolling with stuff anyway, you know? And yeah, I think that's really what you did here was, yeah, it sucked. Maybe it would have been cool to win, but you know, maybe this is your path to it, you know? Yeah. And, and, and here's the other thing is I, nobody can tell me I didn't put in an effort. Right. Nobody. Right. I mean, nobody did the hours I did. Right. Yeah. I was, I solely did them myself. Yeah. So I think a lot of that goes into that is this, um, I think when we honestly prepare for whatever it is that we are, we are expecting mm. that we could be disappointed. If we are prepared, then I think we are better off. We're less likely to be disappointed in it. You know, yeah. yes, you will still feel disappointed. But I think it'll be easier to turn it to a positive thing. And a lot of that, like for me, especially with dealing with people, is I've learned to accept the nature of people. Mm-hmm. And that, and that I try not to fight a person's nature. If yeah. somebody feels a certain way, I can't change how they feel. That's how they feel. Yeah. Yeah. I might still be disappointed. I might still be hurt, whatever it is. But if I can, if I'm willing to accept people for who they are, I can at least it gives me a little keystone to kind of turn on and 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 have a positive experience out of it. Definitely, and I, you know the other thing is like you you were kind of get, getting at there is like, uh, you know you're you ha- you went through disappointment, not devastation. You oh, know? yeah, yeah, and, and that was the thing, and I I think that's hmm. that's great. That's a great because phrase. Because somebody really could have done exactly what you did, gone into it shooting for the moon. Um, and it, you know, full on whatever, lose, and then just be like, go into a, a, a spiral after that. Like, you know, people don't like me or, but you know, it, it could easily go into a very negative place because you've put too much into it. You know, you've, you've gone a little too far with yeah. what you've done. So I over invested. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying that, you know, like I said, I, I feel for the most part, people really should shoot for the moon when you're trying for something that you really believe in and all that. Cause you're just putting more effort into it, but you do have to be careful that, you know, you still understand that, you know, you're not going to hit a home run every time. You know, sometimes you get a hit base hit, <laughs> you know, or a strikeout. Yeah, and I think when, if I compare this to like dating yeah, or, you know, it, which is the worst, how many times that were, we, we should have just been disappointed. We ended up devastated. Yeah. I and mean, that is a great yeah. phrase. <laughs> and, and I had no business being devastated. Right. Except somewhere along the line, my ego got in the way and said, <laughs> ain't that the, that's what it always is. And I really think that's it. You know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's, and it's not to say, I mean, you know, like a lot of people say, well, I'm, I'm just taking my time. I'm trying not to get overly committed or I'm trying not to move too fast or yeah. all these things. Yeah. And, and, and you, you feel like, oh, I'm, be, I'm being distant. No, it's not. You're, you're, you're trying to keep your, that's that possessive self out of it you're trying yeah. to keep yourself your desires i mean at, at least to a reasonable level right it's kind of like the people uh, who who go on like three dates with someone and they're like i'm in love and you're like slow down <laughs> yeah i'm ready to get married yeah, yeah exactly. like, slow you're, down you're, you're you're heading towards de- devastation not yeah, disappointment yeah, yeah you know i'd rather i'd rather be disappointed in life than devastated exactly yeah and you know uh, and and there's a good ch- a good chunk of that's mindset you know not just the way you approached it but it's like like me over the last 
couple years because you know devastation is essentially a uh, you know on the distorted thinking worksheet <laughs> they must, because it's basically it in. it's basically catastrophizing something yeah yeah it is right and again right. take take a step back and go am i in danger you know like can i live can you live yeah. with not being on the city council yes yes does it affect you on a day-to-day basis as far as does it ruin your life no, you know, <laughs> you know, so it's like when you go through those checks on the distorted thinking, you realize pretty quickly that it's like, wow, I'm overreacting to this, you know, or I'm not, yeah. not overreacting. I don't want to worry it that way, but it's like, I, I'm not giving, I'm not, I guess it's the same thing, but I'm not reacting properly to this. Like this should be like, well, that stinks, but you know, Hey, whatever. It was fun. I, you know, something I hadn't tried and, you know, that kind of thing. It should almost sound like, you go into like when a, uh, after a football team loses or whatever, and then they interview the losing coach or whatever. He's like, Oh, that's a great team. And you know, our guys gave a lot of effort, but they were just better today. And you know, yep. it's just kind of that mentality rather than getting yeah. up there and just being like, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm firing the whole team. I'm, <laughs> you know, it's these like guys being, being the right size for the situation. Yeah, exactly. You know, put some things into perspective. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's, that's one one other thing with this one is um, that example I gave a little bit ago about the way Jen handles, you know, like when she's been passed over is this exactly like this scenario basically is, you know, instead mm-hmm. of going crazy about it, it's like, okay, what can I work on? So next time I won't get passed yep. over or I'll be less likely to get passed over. <clears throat> Yeah, and that's that's the I think that's the point of all of these is to find a way to make it so that you can keep improving and your next experiences are better. Mm-hmm. Yes. And our last item is boredom. Boredom can reflect the lack of challenge, meaning you need more to stimulate your mind. Sometimes it's good to peacefully do nothing for short spurts so your brain has a recovery break. Other times, boredom can be a sign that you are not fully utilizing your strengths. When researching my book. Wonder Woman, I found many people feel a soulful agitation that can lead them to accomplishing great things. When you feel bored, try to envision your desired future instead of allowing yourself to be distracted by what is in front of you. I'm going to say that again. When you feel bored, try to envision your desired future instead of allowing yourself to be distracted by what is in front of you. Consider talking to a coach or a good friend who supports your journey to help define the world you are seeking to create for yourself. Your bouts of boredom and restlessness may not end, but at least you have a vision or purpose to pursue as you wander. That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, the light side of boredom can be found when you are prompted to take on new challenges, explore what makes work meaningful, and make decisions that serve your strengths and dreams. Um, and and I think this is, I think this falls into a into a different set of terminology. <laughs> yeah. Um, Boredom meaning midlife crisis, boredom meaning lack of fulfillment. Right. Cause boredom at a deeper level. Right. Boredom that I'm at. <laughs> because I'm, you know, at that essentially, you know, not knowing what I want to do with yeah. things. And Your life. My life. Yeah. And life. Uh, and it is. It's, and it, this, this is kind of where I'm at right now is sitting down, kind of looking at, what options I see and then maybe talking with someone else to, you know, make sure there's not, not options I don't see, you know, kind of a thing. And then kind of moving forward with it because I, I really don't know. And I'm 39. I don't know what the heck I want to do, you know, and it's, and I'm not the only one I've seen. It's so funny because, you know, for years and years, you know, like if you had to move in with your parents, it was a sign, you know, you get ridiculed and all this stuff. I know and see so many people now that this is like common. Yeah. You know, compared to, and because it ends up making like financial sense or you help take care of somebody or, you know, there, a lot of times it's mutually beneficial, but I mean, I'm seeing it on like dating profiles and stuff, you know, like lives with parents and I'm like, wow, I'm just, it blows me away how many people are still, because you never know, like, you know, those situations, you don't know which one you're getting. Are they, yeah. I'm not going to do anything for myself, so I'm just mooching? Or are they, hey, I needed to take a step back to, you know, um, reorganize and then I'm moving forward, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's, again, that's where I'm at. It's like, I don't want to move backwards in life. I want to go forward. But what am I going to do? Like, what what is the best use of my current skills or 
what skills do I need to acquire to put myself where I want to be? You know? Yeah. That, that it's that, that other times boredom can be a sign you're not fully utilizing your strengths. Yeah. You know, that's that, that's that bigger, it's a big picture. But, but I like this one where the, the soulful agitation. Yeah. And that's really true. I see that in a lot of, I mean, I, I, you know, we listen to a lot of podcasts. We hear about people in various parts of their lives. I've heard this many times about where, you know, I feel like I'm just not, like there's something missing. Yep. Like I'm just not doing what I'm supposed to be doing or, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And it, it's worth listening to. If you feel that way, you know, it, yeah. this could be an opportunity. Yep. And there to, are, to, th- you know, there's a lot of people who probably have the option of doing stuff like this, but they don't think they do. They don't realize it because yep. no one's really laid it out for them. Like, this is how it'll work, you know, kind of a thing. Um, some, listen, there's some people that it'd be really difficult for them to do something. You know, some people it's like, look, I got kids, I got this, I can't just stop working here and hope I get, you know, or whatever. And those are a little different. You know, you, you, Sometimes you, you're you just going to have to figure out the best way to deal with your situation. And, you know, other times there's people, you know, like I said, a friend of mine was like 23 and, you know, got a job offer in New York, you know, and was like, I don't know about taking it. And I, and I was like, dude, go. You know, it's like if yeah. that's what you're, you know, it's like you're nothing's tying you down here. That's what you want to do. Why would you not take it? You know, kind of a thing, you know, and part of that is, you know, me regretting a little bit not going to art school straight out of high school <laughs> um but you know it, it it's just and again that's kind of where i'm at now is it's like you know i you know I've, I've talked i've got friends that live all over the country essentially and i've had a couple of them be like you should come out here you know or whatever and it's mm-hmm. like you know i my mom's 70 and there's you know it's like i really don't want to move that far away from her you know kind of a thing at this point so it's like you know, right now just doesn't feel like the time, you know, if I didn't have that situation or things were a little different, yeah, maybe I would, you know, cause there's not yeah. a lot tying me here as far, you know, I'm not working. I don't have kids. I'm not married, you know, like all that kind of stuff. I can just pick, I could just pick up and go, you know? Yeah. So, you know, and again, realistically, I mean, that that's on the list of options. <laughs> I mean, you know, I not ruling anything out. Um, but th- this is a really tough, position to be in like you said when it's the big scope stuff you know like you really like just looking around and it's like like what do i want to do like you know i could go get a job that's you know i could go find a place to work i'm sure i could find somewhere to work you know but it's like what what am i gonna do like is that gonna be looking for something more than just that well it's like what kind of career can i find you yeah. know, when you're 18, you can work wherever and who cares? You're just trying to get yeah. extra money. You know, when you're 39, it's a little different. You know, you'd like to make enough to afford your own place, your own stuff, you know. So th- there's there's a much different weight to it, you know. Yeah. And, and the same with this whole, you know, scope, this whole bit of boredom. It's like this is a different kind of weight, you know, on on a person than that. Just a a normal kind of like, eh, you know what? Nothing's going on. I'm bored on a Friday night or something, you know. So yeah, one of the, one of the, she has another article that is referenced on the bottom. It's called "Go with the Flaw: How to Make <laughs> Peace with Mistakes and Uncertainty," which is just a great title. That is a Go great with the title. flaw. Yeah, but but this is this this where where it says to you know where she says in this article you know. Uh, look for what your dreams and desires. So you quit looking at what's in front of you. A lot of times people get wrapped up in their mistakes and you yeah. know, how, the, how did I get here? And they get so focused on how they got there mm-hmm. that, that it takes, it sucks up all their energy to move on. Well, it makes sense too. Cause I mean, l- when you're looking at how you got somewhere, what are you doing? You're looking backwards. You know, yep. there, there's no, there's no gain, you know, like glancing backwards and le- learning from it's one thing, yeah, but when you're, thing, yeah. when you're just like constantly like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done this. I should. It's like, yeah, but you didn't yep. and you're here. So, <laughs> yep. you know, like, what are you going to do now? Well, yep. I should have, I don't care what you should have done. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's why it's great to talk to people too, mm-hmm. is you never know where somebody throws out an idea. 
Exactly. You, you can sit there and, and there's nothing wrong with and be a pessimist. Go ahead and say no, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah. Thought of no, no. Because maybe there's one thing that makes you go, hmm? Like, you know, I hadn't huh. thought of that. Yeah. Exactly. Look into that. Yep. And At that, least it's something. That's kind of what I think I, you know, that's what I was saying is like, come up with the options I see and then go to someone else and be like, okay, here's what I'm thinking of. And, it, you know, like you said, they may be like, well, have you thought about blank? And you'd be like, oh, yeah. no, I hadn't. So yeah. let's do that. <laughs> or no, that's stupid. I'm not doing that. And I shouldn't have come so, to you. No. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I'm kidding. Go away now before I taunt you a second time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your answer, um, like the Zoidberg meme, the uh, your answer's bad and you should feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I love that. In her, uh, uh, at the bottom, it says about the author. She has a book. It's outsmart your brain, how to master your mind when emotions take the wheel. <laughs> I think I should read this book. <laughs> I was thinking that too. I was like, yeah, maybe. It sounds like a good read. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. Whoever's doing her naming of things is uh, on brilliant. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've got a you've got a great publicist or whatever they call those yeah, people. Yeah, somebody's doing a good job. I don't know if it's her or someone else, but someone's hitting home runs there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't even know how many pages this is. It doesn't look like it's very big. Yeah, I was thinking that too <laughs> I when I looked it. at it. Yeah, I was like, that doesn't look very big. 180 pages. That's not a lot. Well, for that, me, it'd be crazy, but. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's my kind of quick paperback. You know, I actually, you know, it actually might be, uh, depending on how it's broken down, it might be easy for me to read because I can do ones that have like short chapters. I don't have a problem with like my concentration. It's the ones mm -hmm. where there's like 25 pages in a chapter. Then I have a little more trouble. You know, I need like 10 pages, you know, something real quick yeah. and you turn to the next one and you know, that way I can yeah, stop point. wherever, you know. Yeah. Like, exactly. Something you can bite into. Yeah. Where I feel my brain drifting, be like, okay, done reading. Yeah. Cause you know, otherwise I'm going to read this page 17 times. So yeah. Read this book to become emotionally self-aware. Make good choices when consumed by emotions. Understand what triggers the emotions of others. Improve leadership, coaching, and conflict resolution skills. Use insight and empathy to inspire engagement, creativity, and results. Wow, it feels like a book I read when I was reading management books. <laughs> well, that's what her, uh, it looks like that's kind of her, uh, her resume. Yeah. Uh, she is the president of co-visioning a leadership development firm ah, okay yep that makes sense because the terminology she used in that and stuff it's so yeah yeah <laughs> well cool that's our article that's our topic for the day yeah yeah that was a good one pretty good i liked it that yeah. was pretty good for a uh like right before we recorded fine <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i like this go with a flaw thing too yeah, that's great that's a great name i know man it's like I, I want to write an article with like that title. <laughs> it's too bad it's already used. Uh, man. So uh, yeah, I, you got anything else to? No, that's add good. that's in? about it. Yeah, there's a little more to that article. Uh, again, it'll be in the show notes if you want to check it out. Uh, and also, like I said, a uh, link to my um, my art that I've uploaded. I have some that I cool. from this last time I was in college, where it's a lot of figure drawing and stuff and whatnot. So uh, you know. Uh, I'll put a warning out there. There is nudity in it because it's figure drawing in art school and that's what you draw. So, <laughs> um, you know, just so no one's like, oh, my eyes, you know. Uh, so I should probably pull up the stuff that Jen says here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can uh, find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. Well, that's the easy part, yeah. <laughs> find uh, me on Facebook at Heno Heiter. We have a Facebook group, too. <laughs> yep, yep. At facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Uh, our website is the crazy life podcast dot weebly dot com. Our email is the crazy life podcast at outlook dot com. Uh, Jen can be found on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. Uh, the show also can be found on Twitter at the crazy life pod. Um, uh, I forgot where I was at there. There we go. I can be found on Twitter. Jeez, I'm, I'm just not braining well today. Um, I can be found on Twitter at Stunami. My other podcast can be found at salty underscore language or at salty language.com. That show is not safe for work. So keep it away from the children's. Um, what else did we get here? I think that's a, uh, we're part of the tangent network, which can be found at tangent 
So please go check out uh, the other podcasts on there. There's a whole bunch on that network that, uh, you know, you may enjoy. Um, and then if you'd like to help the show out, <clears throat> uh, if you're using iTunes, please rate, review, and subscribe. That helps people uh, find us easier, like when they search or whatever. Uh, if you're using Stitcher or other apps, please use the like or share option uh, for the same reason. It just helps us out a little bit. Um, I, yeah, man, I am just not with it right now. I've had a, like half migraine, like it's kind of a migraine uh, and I, it's just, worst. it's just enough that it's, n- it's bugging me, you know? Um, yep. we're not doctors, professionals, trained anything, no, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, therapist. Uh, so please don't, um, you know, replace therapy with listening to our show and if you need help, please seek it out. Um, you know, don't be like me. Don't wait 20 years. Um, please seek it out. Don't be afraid of, of therapy. Don't be afraid of the medicines, that kind of stuff. It's, you know, it's, uh, you know, especially if your, your life's being, you know, negatively affected by whatever, you know, please get the help you need. Um, if by chance you're feeling, um, suicidal or as though you may harm others, Please contact your doctor, a uh, friend, uh, try not to be alone during those times or call like a suicide hotline number, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of links to that kind of thing over on our Facebook page, um, under links or notes or something like that. Um, so please contact them, you know, again, don't be alone. Um, and if you see or catch yourself doing anything like even writing a, a preparation or how you would do it or a suicide note or whatever. That's, that's the a, a huge first red flag. So please, you know, alert somebody at that point that you're having those thoughts. Um, you know, one other thing I want to say really quick is if you go to the doctor and they give you, um, one of those sheets where you rank how you've been over the last couple of weeks and whatnot, and just in general, especially with these kind of things is, you know, always make sure you're being a hundred percent honest. Like, because the doctors, if you don't tell them this is bad and this is affecting you, they will treat it as though it's minor. So if it's really bothering you, make sure you, you fight for yourself and you emphasize that, you know, whatever, don't overdo it, but (laughs) you know, Mm. um, and then lastly, as I say each week, reach out to somebody, uh, someone you haven't talked to in a while, tell them you love them, tell them that, uh, you know, you appreciate them or tell them why you appreciate them, um, you know, that kind of thing. Just show some gratitude to people. You know, you'll feel better and it may make their day, may save their life, you know, or they might just think you're weird and kind of shrug it off. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's that. Whew. All right. I think that's everything, right? I think so. Yeah. If not, um, yeah, it's in the show notes. <laughs> just, this is awful. I, sh- I just need to, re- it. I need to record this ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> just hit the play button. Yeah. Yeah. Just have that part ready to go. Drop it in there. No, I'm kidding. So, all right. Well, you want to take us out of here then, Heno? Yeah. Uh, well, God, what, what am I going to go out with? Huh? <laughs> well, this week, when you feel yourself getting a little, a little angry, a little guilty, little bored look for the lighter side <laughs>